Hello and welcome to the video to learn how to download SCC 10K data into Excel. To begin, you will open a browser window, type in sec.gov, and hit enter. From this page, we are going to go to the top right, just under the search window, and click Company Filings. In the search box, Company and Person Lookup, start typing the name of the company. I'm going to use Home Depot. And you see, before I finish typing Home Depot, it appears in the list below. So I will click the name of the company, Home Depot. On the right-hand side, under Selected Filings, click the plus arrow next to 10K. This will bring up all of the 10K and the 10Q reports. We're going to look for the 10K report, which is the annual report of the company. So that's 10Q, 10Q, 10K. So this is the most recent filing for Home Depot, March 15th, 2023. So to the far right, you see the word filing. So click filing, and this brings you to this page. On this page, if we click this first link where it says IXBRL, you can download the 10K and it will be in PDF format. But we don't want PDF, we want it to be in Excel. So I'm gonna come over here and click interactive data and under interactive data on the left hand side, you can see all the different parts of the 10K report. We're interested in the financial statements. So I'm gonna click the financial statements. And then you see we have a consolidated balance sheet. Um, we're not gonna use that one. Consolidated statement of earnings, consolidated statement of stockholders equity, and consolidated statements of cash flow. These are the four that we need. So from here, we're going to go back to the top and click View Excel Document. This is going to be a download. When the file completely downloads, you're going to open up that Excel file and you'll see this is all of the financial reports for this company in its SEC 10K. You can see along the bottom all of the, all of the different reports. So you can just delete the ones that you don't need, like we don't need the audit information, so I can delete that tab. The other way you can do it is to use Control, or if you have a Mac, use Command. So I'm going to use the Command key, and I'm just going to select the reports that I want. Consolidated Balance Sheet. I want the Consolidated Statement of Earnings. I want the Consolidated Statement of Stockholders' Equity and the consolidated statement of cash flow. So with those four tabs highlighted, I'm going to right click and I'm going to click move or copy. And at the top, I'm going to move it to a new book and create a copy, click OK. And I have a new spreadsheet now. So again, you can just eliminate the other tabs if you don't want to go through this process. But now I have a spreadsheet with just these four tabs, balance sheet, earnings or statement of income, income statement, some people call it the P&L, consolidated statement of stockholders equity, and the consolidated statement of cash flows. So take a look and you'll notice that none of these cells have formulas in them. They're just the numbers hard hand typed in. So we're going to be using formulas to create the ratios. So as I mentioned, all of the ratios will be computed using formulas. So let's say, for example, I want to compute the current ratio. So I'll write the name of my ratio, current ratio. And let's say I'm going to put the answer to the right of that. And the formula is total current assets divided by total current liabilities. So I will start my formula with an equal sign. And then I will go into the cell of total current assets which is 32,471. Notice this is in millions, which it says at the top. And then I will put a division sign here, the slash, come down and find total current liabilities, which is 23,110 million. And I will hit enter. And I see I have 1.4 with a lot of decimals. I'm going to reduce the number of decimals down to 1.41. So the current ratio is 1.41. I computed that with a formula, which is required. So what is a current ratio of 1.41? What does that mean? It means there is $1.41 of current assets 
for every $1 of current liabilities, which indicates that the company has enough current assets to pay its current liabilities. Let's try one more ratio. This time we're going to use a ratio that requires accessing more than one sheet. So we're going to compute the ratio for return on assets. Whenever you see the word return in a ratio, the return is referring to the statement of earnings or the income statement, P&L. So we're going to start our formula with an equals. We're going to go to the consolidated statement of earnings. We're looking for net income after taxes for the current year. So we will highlight that number, and then we will put a divide it by, and it is return on assets. So now we need to go back to the consolidated balance sheet and find total assets for the same year. And now we should be able to hit enter. So take a look at that formula. It says equals, quotation, just one mark, consolidate statements of earnings. Uh, that's, once you see that, Quotation mark, that means we're going to another sheet. It's telling us the name of the sheet, Consolidated Statements of Earn. And then it puts a, another quotation mark. You'll see an exclamation point. The cell reference is B18. And we're going to divide that by, we're going to another sheet now, one quotation mark, the Consolidated Balance Sheets, and that quotation mark, and exclamation, cell B12. And then we should be able to hit enter and have a figure. And we do. We have return on assets. Let's turn that into a percentage. And we can add two decimal places if you want, depending on what you're trying to achieve. And so the return on assets is 22.38%. OK, I hope this was helpful. You now know how to create a formula using data on the same sheet and also create a formula using data on more than one sheet. Thank you for listening.